Hot dog, it's Sunday morning. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church. Everybody laughed when I walked out and said that. So I am dressed like a hot dog because we have trunk or treat coming up, not this coming weekend, but the next weekend, October, what is that, 29th, this Saturday, from 4 to 7. Just like last year, this year again, we're having a hot dog dinner as a part of that. Uh, And so if that's not incentive enough to come out and decorate a trunk, come get a free hot dog dinner. Um, Just don't eat me. Um, So come join us, 4 to 7 o'clock. We need trunks. Jimmy's getting a picture. Enjoy that. And we need volunteers. We need people to help serve hot dogs um, or to help welcome folks in or help with parking or to help run carnival games. We need lots of help. So there is a sign-up sheet in the back that you can sign up to help with Trunk or Treat. It is not easy to pivot in this thing. (laughs) So we would love to have you come out for Trunk or Treat. Um, As I de-hot dog myself... A few other quick announcements as we, before we begin worship this morning. Uh, this afternoon, um, from 2 to 5 o'clock, Judy and Ron Smith have graciously agreed to host our Rivers and Seas Youth Middle and High School. So from 2 to 5, we're going to be having fun on the farm. So come out um, if you have a middle or high school youth um, in your family. Also, NEST, our new and expecting parent group, will meet this Saturday, weather permitting, at 11 a.m. out at um, the Connector Road Park. Um, so come out for that if you can. Um, one quick thing for your bulletin. So pull your bulletin out real quick. Your first hymn says that it is for the beauty of the earth, hymn 479. It is hymn 879. Change the four to an eight, and you will have it ready to go. And that's all I've got. I'm going to actually go put a robe on and not a hot dog, and I'm going to turn it over to Caroline. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to make a very quick announcement that Alleluia Ringers will be restarting very soon. The Alleluia Ringers are, is our beginner bell group, um, and they serve to enhance the worship experience for those who ring and those who hear it. Um, traditionally, this group has been for our youth, third grade and older, but I want to welcome any adults who are interested as well to come join us. And you're also welcome regardless of your skill or your experience, whether you used to ring as a kid and just haven't done it for a long time, or if you're a complete beginner who has never read music before. All are are welcome to come learn and ring together. Um, I will have these pink sign-up sheets back in the narthex on the table out there. Um, If you're interested, and this is not a commitment, if you just want to try things out and decide, oh, I don't really like this, that's fine. Just put your information down and uh, we can talk a little bit more about it. Um, And that's all. Thank you.
We begin our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Together, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Friends, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, tireless guardian of your people, you are always ready to hear our cries. Teach us to rely day and night on your care. Inspire us to seek your enduring justice for all this suffering world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And that usually gets everybody running for the doors, so <laughs> this is the beginning, so you can't. You'll notice something different about the sanctuary today. We have a cross up here, about 91% wrapped in cloth. We'll talk a little bit about that after the service. We'd like you to stay for about 10 or 15 minutes to talk about the budget. We'll be passing the budget out. It's going to be different than any year that we've had before, so we want to get your feedback. But in the meantime, like to ask Catherine Tyree to come up. She'd like to speak to you about what inspires her to give. Good morning. 
As Mark said, my name is Catherine Tyree. You're probably used to seeing me over there in the choir loft or down here if it's a handbell Sunday or back there playing the saxophone or the clarinet. And I've been asked to tell you why it is that I contribute financially to St. Mark's. A lot of it has to do with being over there or down there or in the Family Life Center for youth programs. I've been attending St. Mark's since I was born, and I was baptized here in 1993. Some of you who have been around here for a while might remember that my baptism photos were used in the financial campaign for the Family Life Center. <laughs> I attended youth groups and Sunday school here, started in the music program first with Sandy Lown and then with Robbie Pearson, and enjoyed years of vacation Bible school, including the giant water slide that used to happen on the hill behind the Family Life Center. When I was old enough, I began to volunteer to help lead those Sunday school and vacation Bible school activities. And that brings me to why I give to St. Mark's each month. I could quote to you the Bible verses that tell you to give. Numbers 18.26, Proverbs 3.9, 2 Chronicles 31.4, Deuteronomy 12.6. Or I could talk about contributing a certain percentage of my pretty meager teacher salary. But I don't think that would be as effective as hearing firsthand about how the programs at St. Mark's make a difference. I actually went through some of the pictures on the St. Mark's website when I sat down to organize these thoughts, and I wish I could tell you about everything, including trunk or treat, God's work our hands, youth Sundays, mission trips. There's a ton, but I'm going to stick with two things. First, the music ministry at St. Mark's has been an important part of my life for literally as long as I can remember. I started learning songs like Lord of the Dance and Seek Ye First with Sandy Lown when I was in elementary school, and by the time I was in high school, I was involved with choir and handbells as well as singing with the youth group. Lisa actually recently mentioned Pass It On during, youth, during choir, and that I learned here during youth group. Some of you might know it. Now that I'm a little bit older, I've been let on to a secret. Sheet music costs money and repairing bells and the organ and other devices like the sound system costs money. Music is such an important part of my faith experience, and so I give to St. Mark's because of that. Now second, I've looked forward to Vacation Bible School every year from when I was little to now. I still get excited about it. I've seen the way that a group of kiddos comes in each year and they leave with new excitement about how God can be part of their lives. For the last few years, we've done something called God Sightings. Now, I can't take credit for that name because it comes from an organization that writes VBS programs, but I will take credit for telling you about it now. God Sightings are places where you see God's influence in your everyday life. It could be something like a beautiful bird song in the morning, or a stranger who went out of their way to be kind to you, or anything like that. Every year, when we share our God Sightings, one of mine is all of the smiling faces learning new songs and new Bible stories. I always remember how much fun I had doing that when I was younger and how I got to meet new friends. I even still know tons of the songs that I learned during VBS. Vern and the rest of the Beer and Bible group knows that. <laughs> Vacation Bible School at St. Mark's is something that I know I'm going to support for years to come, and it's one of the reasons I give both time and money to St. Mark's. Now, maybe neither of the things I just talked about speak to you and where you are in your relationship with St. Mark's, and that's okay. Maybe you're still looking for your special spot, where you fit in, where you can make a difference, or maybe you've already found that. But hopefully you can recognize the reason why I give to St. Mark's and why I encourage all of you to do the same. We all have a special gift or a passion that can bring us closer to each other and to God. I contribute my time talents and money to St. Mark's, and I hope you'll find the best way for you to do that as well. Thank you. The first reading today is from Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 through 31. The same night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. 
he took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob, Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless, unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask me my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, for I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Word of God, word of life. We will read Psalm 121 responsibly. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where is my help to come? The Lord will not let your foot be moved, nor will the one who watched over you fall asleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Lord will preserve you from all evil and will keep your life. Thank you, Debbie, and thank you, Catherine, and thank you, Mark. And now I invite our children to come forward for our children's message. Psalm 121 that we just prayed together um, was read uh, once upon a time in the Lutheran Church and plenty of other denominations when uh, people came forward, when children were brought forward for the sacrament of holy baptism, especially kind of like Catherine did in 1993. So Psalm 121 is a traveling psalm, a traveling psalm. Anyway, hey. Good morning, y'all. Good to see you. Keegan, thanks for acolyting today. We're in the white robe. Like Pastor Vern, like me. You can try on this hot dog outfit later if you want to, though. So be like Pastor Vern even more. So, good morning. Good morning. So there's a story that Debbie read first about Jacob. And Jacob was a wrestler. Michael, have you ever wrestled before? Michael's a good wrestler. Michael loves wrestling. He's a good wrestler. That's what I've heard. And so, um, I wrestle with Michael. And you have to wrestle with your brother, too? Oh, my goodness. So you become a good wrestler, too. Thank you, Sarah Grace. So this story about Jacob. Jacob was on his way home from a long trip and stopped to sleep by a river one night. During the night, a man woke Jacob up and began to wrestle him. Jacob was surprised. Who is this, he wondered. What does he want? First of all, anybody named here anybody here named Jacob that you all know of? Anybody named Jacob? Everybody point to the man in the green shirt over here. Say, good morning, Jacob. Good morning. That's Jacob. That's the father of the little one right there. Cool. Hey, Jacob. After wrestling all night, the man begged Jacob to let him go. No, said Jacob, I will not let you go until you have blessed me. And the man asked, What is your name? Jacob told the man his name, and then the man blessed Jacob and gave him a new name. Everybody look over at Jacob and say, good morning, Jacob. And now the new name that the Bible story character Jacob was about, the new name says, I will give you another name. His name, your name is now Israel. It means you have wrestled with God. So say, good morning, Israel. Good morning, Israel. Another name for Jacob. What a surprise. Could it really be true? Jacob had not really wrestled with a man. Jacob had wrestled with God, and God blessed him. Jacob hurried the rest of the way home. What a story he had to tell his family. And then in this Spark Story Bible, moms and dads, it says, ask someone to try wrestling with you. Mm -hmm. 
ask an adult to watch. <laughs> How long can you go before you get tired? So if anybody wants a wrestling partner, here's Michael up here, or a wrestling opponent, perhaps, or Sarah Grace, right? Yeah, yeah. Or Jacob, what a good name. And you wrestle with your sister, you probably wrestle with a brother, yeah. We all wrestle with things and with people from time to time, yeah. Eventually, though, it was God gave Jacob a blessing, gave him a new name and something else, gave him a new name. First of all, those of you who were here last Sunday, remember Pastor Vern with the Halloween pumpkin and the light shining through that pumpkin and saying something about being a blessing, and then we had a service of healing where we all were blessed. And two Sundays ago, before that, I invited some of our boys and girls at the children's sermon to help bless the congregation as we blessed grandparents and parents and blessed one another with God's blessing. So, Jake, you know. So, Jacob was blessed with a new name. What's that new name? Anybody remember? Jacob was blessed with the name Israel, which means wrestles with God. He has wrestled with God. And he also had something else. He had a limp. He had a limp to remind him he had wrestled with God and he had, been a bl he had been blessed, but he had a limp. I need you to stand up. Stand up, y'all, and walk with me with a limp. All right? Walk, we're going to walk a little bit this way, and then we're going to bless one another. So walk with a limp. Like you got hit, hurt in the hip. Walk with a limp. Hold your hip. So we're limping. I know some of you all know more about how this feels than we do. <laughs> all right. Stop right here. Say the words after me. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace and give you peace. Even if you do walk with a limp. Even if you do walk with a limp and wrestle with God. And wrestle with God. Amen. Boys and girls, indeed, God bless you. according to St. Luke, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Speaking of wrestling with God, the back of the Bible, or the back of the bulletin today shows a couple pictures of people who wrestled with God, including the lady in the gospel text today, although some will say this widow is more godlike than the judge. Here's the story. Jesus said or told a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to the judge and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. Grant me justice against my opponent. Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, he refused. But later, the judge said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Jesus told a parable about their need to pray always. Let us pray. O Lord our God, God of Jacob, God of Abraham and Isaac, and God of Israel, and God of us, in the name of Jesus Christ, we gather to hear your word, to reflect on, on your work and your wrestling work in our lives and for our lives. May our hearts and minds hear your word again this day for us. 
that we may experience a bit of your peace that passes all understanding, that will continue to guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Several different things today. Always one. I don't know if anybody brought a leaf or not. The marker mentioned about bringing a leaf on this uh, fall uh, weekend, Oktoberfest type of weekend. Happy birthday, German Lutherans. Um, anyway, fall leaves, autumn leaves. And so I hold this autumn leaf and a small poem about leaves by Kathleen Higgum. When autumn leaves begin to fall, I think of God most of all. Colors bursting with the sun, rays shine down on everyone. There is a leafy autumn smell. I walk on softness where they fell, floating gently to the ground, touching down without a sound. When autumn leaves begin to fall, the Father orchestrates it all. Blooms in waiting seem to say he is coming back someday. Here I stand in wonder of this. A soft wind blows to me a kiss. My spirit tells my mind to hush. Peace abounds in Christ for us. The seasons change, come and go, but this is what I truly know. When autumn leaves begin to fall, I think of God most of all. So you're here today because you thought of God most of all. Maybe because it's Sunday. Maybe because this is your tradition. Maybe because this is something that you needed today and help for today, by the way. I mentioned Jacob being up here a while ago. Jacob, they'll be back again next Sunday for Holy Baptism coming up. We will not, probably won't be saying Psalm 121 as they come forward, but, but a reminder of, in baptism that we say we need God's help, God's saving grace, the forgiveness of sins in, through the waters of baptism, that we need to be united with Christ as a body of Christ, something bigger than ourselves, and that we need and pray and hope to have this life and life eternal. Kind of like a, a leaf uh, falling from a tree, something bigger than itself. The, the trees give the leaves. They provide the shade for us in the summertime. And then they start falling all around us and providing eventually some, some dirt and some soil and maybe some good compost. And sometimes they're just fun to play in when our kids are small and you rake them and you blow them up really, really tall. And then they can also be a nuisance, getting in everything and on everything as well, those leaves. But the, the beauty of the leaves can also remind us of God. Pastor Vern and I were up at Camp Lutheridge this uh, past Monday, Tuesday for the annual Synod Fall Convocation, but we haven't been there since 2019 because of COVID and other things. It was a rich experience to be there, to see friends. What? Your kids are now out of college? Wow. What? You have three children now and the oldest one is six? Where did time go? All those kind of reunion moments among pastors up there. And then we heard a keynote speaker that reminded us of God's glory and the hope that we have in God. She is a young adult. She's an indigenous Native American Christian. She's lived all around the United States and written some books. And she even had one of her poems that talked about leaf glory that connected us to God and even the stewardship in the midst of that leaf glory. So it was a good experience. And I always loved being in the mountains because I grew up in Boone, North Carolina in Grace Lutheran Church, perhaps. I went to Lutheridge from the time I was little with mom and dad until the time they dropped me off by myself in third grade and I was homesick and I didn't want to be there at all. But by the end of the week, I didn't want to go back home at all. And I continued to go there through the summer after ninth grade and then I worked there four summers around college years. And then throughout the years, I've continued to go back to Luther Ridge and to the mountains and to experience God in that place. And some of our dollars Every single Sunday, go to the North Carolina Synod that helps then support places like Luther Ridge and uh, Lenore Rhine College, where I ended up going, as well as the sheet music uh, that our music ministry needs to provide as well. I say this thinking about Psalm 121 this day. I lift up my eyes to the hills from where is my help to come. And you're supposed to pause there. We went really quickly when we read that a while ago with Debbie. But you're supposed to pause there. And perhaps I'm supposed to send you outside to look up at the sky and to ponder your own places of need and your own help. Where do you need help in your life in this week ahead and last week and in the world in which we live? I lift up my eyes to the hills from where is my help to come. The mayor in Raleigh a couple of days ago after that 15-year-old got a hold of a couple of guns and killed too many people 
five is still too many with that and injured too many. The mayor of Raleigh says we got to do something and she appealed looking up to the skies for greater help to come from bigger governments than just her Raleigh mayor's office government. She appealed to the people. She said we need help with this violence and this problem. I was uh, at camp as I mentioned and I drove home much less concerned for help, but I got home and all of a sudden I realized I didn't have my backpack with me. This, this red backpack from the ELCA and I had left it at camp, oh my goodness. So I texted a couple of pastor friends and others up there and both two members of our church were there in addition to Pastor Vern, Carissa Abraham and Emily Dubay and they said, oh, don't worry Pastor Dave, we'll take care of it for you. We got it covered. So I needed help. By the way, sometimes I'm the uh, hired help hand, I'm the hired hand to provide help. And sometimes I'm the one who needs help. I need a lot of help. Help him, Jesus. Um, and I got back here, and then Wednesday night we had choir practice, and our prayer concerns in choir practice among those concerns. Mitch leans over to me and says, did you know that Mark Brady had a heart attack? And I did not know that. Those of you who know Mark and Debbie. And um, so I called Debbie, and she said, well, it's been touch and go. He had a heart attack. They put a stent in, but it's still touch and go. So we need prayers and continue to pray and I called her back on Thursday, and a second stint had been put in. She said, Mark's doing so much better now. Thank you for the prayers, and thanks be to God. And you can tell that to the church that needed help and needed our prayers. And so today we lift, up, we lift up Mark and Dave and our thoughts and our prayers, among others. Last night, Pastor Vern had gotten home from another conference he had attended. And Jeff up there in our balcony and Jean Profrock and their family called to say, they were going to have to put down their dog, Ranger. Um, it had a big uh, seizure and some other concerns, and they were going to have to put... And so Pastor Vern responded to their help cry. Sometimes we are blessed to be able to go and help, and sometimes we're the ones who need help. Help them, Jesus. <laughs> when I was in Hickory, I served at the, on the Cooperative Christian Ministry Board, and one of my roles for at least a year, I, I led a little small worship service on one Wednesday a month, in which I also stuck around that morning, Wednesday morning, just to listen to prayer concerns and people that came in. And one lady walked in and said, help, 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 help. And I'm like, yes, ma'am. And then she continued to say, no, stand back, get away, get away. And I realized she was talking to herself. Eventually, we said, can we pray together? And she said, please. And I started praying. And I still remember her saying, help, help, help. Help me, Jesus. And she never said, get away or stay back or anything like that. She just kept saying, help me, Jesus. And that was my prayer for her, but also for me. And to help us, Jesus, in the midst of the world, in the midst of life. This psalm, I lift up my eyes to the hills as a traveling psalm, as I mentioned, for baptism. But also, we've prayed this psalm numerous times at funerals and memorial services. Psalm 121, a reminder, where does our help come? A reminder of our profession of faith using the Apostles' Creed. Our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Page 1162 in your books. Turn to the back of your book a moment, this red book. Martin Luther, Oktoberfest. We'll, we'll close our... There's a whole lot more to say for this psalm, but we'll close our sermon with this. This aspect of where does our help come from and I look around the church, and I know that, and we'll read this in just a moment, but I know that the help comes from you all. Um, back after my daughter was born, when Rachel was born, and I was a pastor in Raleigh, and I wrote an article about a pastor and ministry is like having a newborn baby, and you're always relying on the grace of others. And my grandfather at the time was 90-some years old, and he wrote me a note because he had gotten that newsletter in the mail, and he wrote me a note and said, this was a fine article and never forget that we always have to rely on God's grace, but also the grace of people in the church. Because otherwise, Pastor Vern's going to be a, an unemployed Oscar Mayer worker, and I'm going to be an unemployed barber, and you don't want to have a barber shop with me. My kids always ask me, Dad, how come you cut your hair so low in the middle? I didn't quite understand, but look out. But we rely on one another for help. We rely on one another for God's grace. Uh, Pat, what Mark Relier didn't mention is that you'll see a card sooner or later today that says, I will help, and I will help, or we will help. The word is going to be help on there. What does Martin Luther say about it? Check out page 1162, the first article, 
We'll say this again in just a moment. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And then, was is das, or what is this, or what does this mean? Say the next two paragraphs with me that start with, I believe. I believe that God has created me together with all that exists. God has given me and still preserves my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all limbs and senses, reason and mental faculties. In addition, God daily and abundantly provides shoes and clothing, food and drink, house and farm, spouse and children, fields, livestock, and all property, along with all the necessities and nourishment for this body and life. God protects me against all danger and shields and preserves me from all evil. And all this is done out of pure fatherly and divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness of mine at all. For all of this, I owe it to God to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. A reminder of what God gives to us since God is the maker of heaven and earth of all the blessings of daily bread and daily life. And then Luther concludes that by saying, for all of this, I owe it to God to thank and praise, serve and obey. And maybe our offerings are a way of owing something to God sometimes. Maybe we're giving an offering to thank, to praise, to serve, to obey, to buy the sheet music, to help provide for camp. Maybe it's just because we owe something, because without any merit or worthiness of mine at all, Jesus has blessed me and us with grace with blessings, with new names, baptized children of God, as we wrestle with life and with finances, with, with money, and with what do we owe to God. In the name of Jesus Christ, our help. Just as Jacob wrestled with God, so we also wrestle with life every day. So we gather together to pray for uh, the world, for ourselves, for one another, for all people, and for all the ways in which we wrestle and ask for God's help. Gracious God, help us. Help this world. This church that you formed out of ashes, that you called to proclaim the gospel, this church throughout the world called to be the hands and feet of Christ, to be your voice of good news to all people. Help us, O oh God, in our ministry to uh, proclaim your love, your light, and your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, O oh God. As we have sadness and grief, be with those who have lost loved ones. Especially today, we lift up the Prufrock family in the midst of uh, the death of their dog, Ranger. We pray for all those who have lost pets, for those who feel separated or isolated from your love, especially those whom we name aloud on our lips and our hearts and in our minds at this time. Seth, Laura, Greg, and Ava. Help us, O oh God, as we surround and support those individuals. Help us to be a sign of care and compassion 
Help us to be an extension of your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend these and all of our prayers, continually asking for your help to help and guide us as St. Mark's Lutheran Church, as children of God, and as co-workers in the gospel. We pray through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And I skipped over the creed, so now that we've prayed, let's confess the creed of our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. Thanks and praise. Pastor Dave just gave you a little bit of a seminary lesson on the first article of the creed. So here's article two of the creed, where we proclaim that on the night in which he was betrayed or handed over to be crucified, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. After sharing that meal, our Lord was crucified, but three days later rose again from the grave so that we might know that nothing in all of creation can separate us from that good news and from the good news of this meal. So together, let us pray as Jesus taught the disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time we'll celebrate communion together. Um, we are receiving communion by intention today. You can come up, receive bread. There will be um, two folks with bread and two folks with chalices. Um, so you can receive bread. Um, and then if you prefer not to receive by intention, we do also have out back some of the, the old school, the rip and sips back from the beginning of COVID days. Um, so you can pick up one of those if you wish. And we do have gluten-free bread as well. So come, this is Christ's table and all are welcome here. Thanks be to God.
Lutheran aerobics, up, down, up, down. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Fed again by grace and again hearing that God is our help, we travel out, just as this is a traveling psalm, we travel out into the world to proclaim that good news to all people, knowing that Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit goes with you and gives you strength for each day. Amen. It's not going to be that long. It's not going to take that much time. I'm going to have the ushers come in and pass out budget documents to you that we're going to.